Marjorie was asking uh, before um, how your how motherhood affected your writing and how um, your writing affected mothering. Um, I have to say first of all that I'm the only person I know who got away without doing the heroic things modern women do to be mothers and be whatever they, they also want to be. I had a mother who wanted to do nothing except to mother my children. She lived in an apartment by herself down on the ground floor in this building and in the morning she would come up and we would have breakfast and then she would take care of the children and I would go downstairs into her apartment and write. No, I just want to say my mother was the really good mother. She was very loving and very funny and uh, entirely the kind of person who wants, she, she, what she wanted was to make life easier for somebody else. And I was happy for her to do that. She, she was the natural mommy. And we did that. She lived downstairs after my children were gone and turned into school children. She lived downstairs until she was 97. And then I did have to put her into Amsterdam House nursing home. And she lived until she was 101. So, so I mean, I, I, the only uh, response I can make to what it was like to be a mother and a writer, I do have a not particularly comfortable memory of a child standing behind me waiting for me to finish the sentence before asking the question he didn't come to ask. I have asked them if, uh, if that was really awful. They said, ah, no. They were very, my children were nice to me about it. So they're asking about magic, and that question really intrigues me. Lori believes in magic because she's played around with magic realism and Luce Noah and um, Half kingdom. I, I fall into it very readily. I mean, dreams are quite as, as useful in writing as, as is your walk to the supermarket. Uh, I don't believe in any sense. I, I, I think if I met a ghost, I would say I must have had too much cheese and uh, my stomach is okay. I, I don't, I don't, I'm not a believer, but I find these these uh, these mysteries very very useful and uh, usable. Was Lucinella a real departure for you? From oh, I just want to say I started writing the book that I think is my best book. I don't know what the world thinks, but I think her first American is my real good book. But it essentially took me eighteen years to write, and the first one or two years, I was writing it without understanding who my, who my protagonist was, at least to say the woman, the girl in the story. It's a book about a, a, a European Jewish girl who comes to Europe and uh, uh, has a long uh, a friendship and affair with a very much older uh, black journalist. And it's a story of becoming Americanized by learning from, from the black experience. And it both wants to say that there is a parallel between Jewish and black experience, and they're totally different. And to make the, those two points was the, was the point of the story. But I did not know how to do this story. And I, uh, after two years, I stopped and wrote Lucinella, which was about Getting going to parties and not getting invited to parties and then and and uh, and uh, life happening socially, which is exactly the opposite of the of the of the of the of the love story. Um, uh, and I don't know uh, whether why I why I allowed myself uh, magic realism. I think we we got to call it. For instance that Lucinella meets her younger self and also her older self at a party and interacts with them. I thought I, I, thought I was having a really good time. <laughs> uh, 
to be to to be the person in the middle of your life with your sort of with your hands on the ropes sufficiently to remember what it was like to get to, to a party to wait to go to that party for a week and then when when you get to it, to go home and not go in <laughs> uh, and to be uh, at the end of, of of the of the of your of your life as a writer it, it seemed it seemed an interesting to compare those but not theoretically but to make them happen in the same part mm -hmm. one of my favorite things about about party was my invention of the quarter turn the quarter turn is you're having a conversation with these people and you got by a board with them so you do a quarter turn and you get <laughs> <laughs> and the bucket let me tell you about the bucket and then let's move on <laughs> the bucket is the way you collect the things that make you feel good about yourself. Somebody says something nice. Somebody has actually read your book. The trouble is that the plumbing doesn't work because the hunger for this satisfaction does not connect up with the satisfaction of it. So the bucket has no bottom and everything keep pouring out. You keep putting things in and keep pouring out. And there's, there's no, it never happens that you find yourself Satisfied. It never ever happened. <laughs> the bottom is bucket. <laughs> <laughs> so like Lucinella allowed me to really play with the whole notion of of uh, of writing, which is surely the thing you do that has no side at all. But I used to have it. No longer works because now we've got computers. I used to think that while you're down here and you're writing, you are at one person. But while you're taking the, in, the, in those days, taking a page out and putting a new page in the computer, then you up and you want to be famous and rich and everybody <laughs> loves you, then you go back there. And all of that does not exist mm -hmm. until you put in the next page. <laughs> it's that kind of thing that I was able to play with in, in Lucinella. Mm. What writers have inspired you over time? I know the Bible has. The Bible, the, the Grimm's, Kafka, Shakespeare, Jane Austen, mm -hmm. T, uh, uh, Henry James, Proust. Who else? That's the, well, isn't that enough? Those, those are good. <laughs> those are good. And, and I remember once being told, and I put in Cynthia Ozick, because I really do love reading her. Besides the children's ghost story, are you working on now? Um, um, I I don't have the breath. In fact, I never did have the breath to write a novel. Most of my novels, all all my five novels, I don't have that many, were all written as if I were writing a chapter at a time that might also have been an individual thing. So I don't write novels the way I'm supposed to. And I'm not, I don't have it in me to even think of another novel. Especially if they're going to take me 18 years to write. <laughs> I just had my 88th birthday, so I got to make up. <laughs> so what I'm writing at the moment is something I call the journal I never wrote. And the idea is that uh, I used to think that it was useless writing down things that happened since if they were any use, I was going to remember them. And by you, some and things that you could write, you could one day write about. Uh, it turns out not to be true because the people whom I would now like to ask about when exactly when that happened and where and did it actually happen, they all have all died. So now I'm reaching back and finding any number of things that still could be written about. And now I have to just find a framework for them or a reason for them, and all that's interesting. You have a regular time for writing every day. Do you still? Oh um, yes. And when Let you me sit down, let me briefly tell you how it happened. Mm -hmm. I was in a with a group of friends over the summer, and the character of her first American. Uh, we, he was one of the one of the guests, and we would uh, decide that we were. This is a this is, this is a black and white uh, integrated little group of friends, 
And somebody would say in the morning, let's do, go to the swimming hole, or let's go to the little museum, Watertown, that's where we were, we in Watertown, Connecticut. And I would say, I'm sorry, I can't go because I still have to write. I have to write every day. And I never wrote anything at all. And my friend said, I tell you what you do. You get up in the morning, get up, get up at 7 o'clock, get up at 8 o'clock, and write for half an hour, or don't write for half an hour, but let's hear no more about it. <laughs> I thought this was really terrific. So, but I didn't get up at 7 o'clock, I got up at 5 o'clock, I got up at 4 o'clock. I did or did not write. But anyhow, that was the beginning of this notion that you get up in the morning and you do the writing before you do anything else. Um, it took me a good year to actually get into that habit. And now I have the habit, and by habit I mean something that's easier to do than to not do. And when I then uh, had got jobs, I was 20 uh, uh, at that time, 20, 23. And uh, when I got jobs, I simply arranged them in such a way that I could write in the mornings. For instance, I was a textile designer for a while, and I would write in the mornings and textile design in there. And then I had children, and they were kind enough to, if they're going to break a leg, they had to do it <laughs> in the afternoon. <laughs> and of course, my mother was there. But it now has become the thing I do. I get up, I have a cup of coffee, I go to the computer by 8 o'clock and I'm there till 1 o'clock. I may get it, I mean, I may just change that same period to a, a an and or the and to a period. That means that's one of the things you can do for hours and hours. But I have always wondered what people do with themselves if they don't write from 8 to 1. <laughs> How do they get it? <laughs> through the desk. Through <laughs> 8 to 1. <laughs> no, you can do that. <laughs> and do you always know what you're going to be working on when you sit? I mean, no, if you, you see, that's the point. Mm -hmm. um, if I'm in the middle of something, I know what I'm doing. If I'm, that's why I think you're, the project of being given a prompt would not be comfortable for me because it, it's exactly getting something started that I don't know how to do. Mm. That is my, that's a chore. Mm -hmm. uh, if by chore we mean a job that we don't want to do. Uh, but do, do so, you usually know which story you're going to work well, on? Well, I was usually yeah. working on some, I, I yeah. usually have two or three shorter things. Right now I have these uh, 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 journal entries. Mm -hmm. I have three of them. I have two of them now that I'm working on. Or three of them, yeah, three of them, and and uh, and since I spend hours and hours getting it right, I'm I'm busy. It can be busy for those five hours. Right. I like. I'm not going to say it right. There's a quote that I've come across, and you've said it to us also in class about being interested in the in the stuff from the stew of being human that that goes back to Adam and Eve, that, uh, that Eve might have had the same experiences as you well, in that, to get to, that, to the essential. I have a dear and brilliant friend, Vivian Gornick, and she's always saying, you can't write that now. And I say, there's nothing you can't write now because at least I'm interested in that which is common to Adam and Eve and me. Mm -hmm. And she's interested in the, in the movement of, of culture, of the change, in, in expectations, so uh, both of those are, of course, perfectly correct, but I, I, I just do mine. <laughs> uh, one of the reasons I love the, the, the uh, biblical stories is when you, because when you find your stereotype right there, you know, mm. when the first story in the Bible is about saying, I didn't do it, he did it, <laughs> you're still doing that. <laughs> he did <laughs> Did you used to take notes on conversations? Because there's so much of yeah, her first yeah. American that's convers you know, this dense conversations, you know, just... Uh, uh, what, because half the, the most, some, much of the story is told by my black uh, uh, protagonist telling... The, 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 young, the girl says to him, the white girl says to him, 
how did so and so happen? And he says, tell your story. Mm -hmm. And he starts a story that seems to have nothing whatsoever to do with the question until you get to the end. Uh, <laughs> and the end line answers the question. <laughs> that made me last. Do you have a philosophy of life? Yes, that we are still operating on the same principles of Adam and Eve. <laughs>